Hi, this is Hannah with French Fair, and today we're working on a chippy finish using five layers of cracked patina and one step paint. I'm using light base one step paint for my first layer on this piece. I want to be able to see little hints of that white underneath all of these layers when we're done. I'm going to use a synthetic brush and apply maybe two or three coats. Your piece will determine how many coats you need to do. one step paint to dry we can move on to mixing our first layer of cracked patina. This is super easy to use if you watched my previous video on cracked patina some of this might be repeat information. All you need for this is your cracked patina, a bowl or Tupperware, anything to mix in, and a little bit of warm water. So we're going to take our cracked patina and put it into our bowl And then just add a little bit of warm water. You can experiment with how much water you want to use. The thicker that your cracked patina goes on, the thicker that your crack is going to be. The thinner that it goes on, the thinner that your crack is going to be. So I really want my first layer on this to be a pretty heavy and thick crack. So I'm only going to add a little bit of warm water. And this is a really sticky substance. It's kind of like a watered down version of maple syrup. That's totally normal and how it's supposed to be. Once you get the hang of working with it, it's super fun to use. So there we have our mixed cracked patina and now we're ready to apply. So I'm gonna be applying this with a synthetic brush. I said in my last video that it doesn't matter whether you use a chip brush or a synthetic brush. I've now found that when you use a chip brush, you get a lot of those bristles into your cracked patina. It's super sticky. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the synthetic brush this go around and we're gonna see if that works any better. So we're just gonna apply this all over and try and go in one direction because that's the direction that you're gonna put your next color of one step on top of. And I wanna just make sure that we've got a super even coat of this all over, even on these edges. And then once we're done with coating this, it'll take about 30 minutes to dry. It's never going to fully dry. It's always going to be a little bit tacky and that is totally normal. It's kind of a strange substance to get used to working with, but there's so many different ways to use it. Okay, so we've got this entire thing covered and we're gonna let this sit now for about 30 minutes until it's dry enough. It will be a little bit tacky to the touch, but you should be able to run your hand over it smoothly without your hand being sticky. So we're gonna let this set and then we'll come back for our first layer with the cracked patina. Once our cracked patina is dry, we're ready to move on and use our first color of one step paint. I'm gonna be using Parisian gray and I'm gonna apply this with a synthetic brush. You can totally use a chip brush if that's what you prefer. Now, while we're working on this finish, I'm using only my hands. You can use a chip brush to remove that layer of paint I'm just using my hands for this finish. So you're gonna want a couple things at the ready, just some regular paper towels and some wet paper towels. You wanna make sure if your hands get too loaded up with products that you have the ability to clean them down so you can keep working quickly. If you get too much product on your hands while you're working, you end up just placing product back down onto your surface rather than removing it. 
that's a positive tool versus a negative tool. And we want to make sure we're using negative tools so that we're removing paint from the surface rather than putting it back down. So totally advise, have some paper towels and some wet paper towels at the ready because you do have to work pretty quick with this step. Okay, so we're gonna start applying this with our synthetic brush in the color Parisian Gray. And we're just gonna apply this in the same direction that we applied our cracked patina. You're gonna have to work pretty fast with this. That's just the name of the game with this stuff. And you just wanna try and load it up as much as you can before it starts to crack. And I did put this first layer of cracked patina on pretty thick, so it is gonna to start to crack fairly fast. I have noticed that you can add a little extra water to your cracked patina and it won't crack as fast. So if you're working on a surface that you do need a little more time on that you can't break up into too many sections, watering it down a little bit might be your best bet. I'm just gonna get as much coverage on this as possible. You can't go over this too many times. Once you get it laid down, you can't start to run over it to get that little bit of extra cover coverage because it is going to start to crack really fast. So we're just going to sit here and wait to start and see where this is mattifying. Wet paint is not when you want to pull it. When it starts to dry, that means it's ready to pull. You have a kind of short window to work with this. If it dries too much, then you lose your chance to pull up that paint. So I'm just using my hands for this. I really like the way that my finishes turn out when I use this and use my hands, so I'm just gonna use my hands. And we're just gonna lay our hands down and start to pull that up. And there's certain areas that will pull quicker than others. That's okay. I really like that the way when you use your hands it kind of ends up giving a little bit different of a texture that I am a big fan of. Now, see our hands are starting to get dirty. That means we're gonna end up starting to put product back down onto the surface. So I'm gonna take my wet paper towels and just clean my hands down and then make sure that they are thoroughly dried before we go back in again. Okay, so clean hands and now we can kind of keep working making sure I get some of this paint on these edges lifted. And there's no science to this. That's kind of the thing that I really love about cracked patina is that it's really just super fun to play with. I just wanna lift enough that I can see that white underneath. We're gonna have a ton of different layers going on here. So I do wanna make sure that I remove enough that we see the previous layer underneath. That's what really gives that amazing depth after all of those different layers. Okay, and I'm gonna call that good for our first layer. I've removed enough that you can see that white base layer underneath, but you still get that gray on top. So I'm gonna leave that, and then we're gonna wait for this to completely dry. And then we are gonna go in and sand it ever so lightly with some 220 to 320 sandpaper, just to knock down some of these high ridges I noticed that when you do so many layers of cracked patina, you really want to make sure that you are sanding in between your layers or it starts to build up to a point that you can't work with it. So we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back for a second layer. Now that our paint is dry, we're gonna just hit this really lightly with some 220 to 320 sandpaper, not to remove any of this paint, but just to kind of smooth down a couple of these high ridges. Since we're doing so many layers, I think this step is important. Otherwise it starts to build up too much and gets a little tricky to work with. So we're just gonna hit this ever so lightly with some sandpaper, and then we're gonna go in with our same mixture of cracked patina and do another layer so we can do our next color of one step paint. Dry, we're 
ready to move on with our next color of One Step Paint. I'm using a custom made paint color. This is Palmer Pink with a tiny hint of Charm School just to give that pink a little bit more depth and be a little less pale. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this the exact same way that we did with the Parisian Gray. We're gonna lay it down with a synthetic brush in the same direction as the Cracked Patina, and then we're gonna use our hands to remove that paint just the same way we did before. I'm using Cracked Patina for this project because I want to incorporate all the different colors from a decoupage paper that I chose for my drawer faces. I'm pulling from all of the colors in that paper to create textures and layers using the Cracked Patina. When my pink paint is totally dry, I'm going to do the exact same thing and go over it with a little bit of sandpaper just to get rid of those high ridges, not too heavy handedly. I don't want to remove any of the paint with the sandpaper. So I'm gonna give this a quick sand and then I'm gonna go over with another mixture of cracked patina before we do our next layer of colors. While I'm waiting for this layer of cracked patina to dry, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I'm gonna use next. I'm using two different colors, both mixtures of one step paint, one green mixture and one red mixture. So I'm using Cranley Garden mixed with Slesnick Gray for my green color. Cranley Garden is a really beautiful deep green and I just wanted to tone it down a little bit with that Slesnick Gray to give it a tiny bit more of a sage tint to it. And for the second color I'm using, I'm using Charm School, which is a beautiful bright kind of deep red color. And I'm toning it down just a tiny bit with a little tiny hint of black one step paint. I'm gonna be using both of these colors at the same time on my next layer with mostly the green being put down with just tiny hints of that red and I'm gonna show you how I blend those together. Same thing as before, we're gonna apply these layers the same way. We're gonna use both colors, our green and our red. So we're gonna use two different brushes. These are just synthetic brushes, small ones, because I'm working on a small surface. If you're working on a bigger surface, please use a bigger brush and some paper towels, some dry ones, and some wet ones for when our hands get dirty so we can clean them off and keep working quickly. So we are ready to start applying this and we're just gonna do it the exact same way, but I'm gonna show you how I use two colors on the same layer. So I'm doing this because I don't necessarily think I need two more layers when I only want tiny hints of this red and I really want it to blend with this green color. So I'm gonna do it on the same layer and I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna start by applying this green the exact same way that we did with our other layers. And I'm not trying to cover this entire thing this time. I do still wanna see a ton of that pink underneath. So I'm just kind of washing over this, applying it heavily, but not, not as full coverage as the last layers, I'd say. And then working quickly, I'm gonna to start to add some of this red color. And I'm just kind of gonna sporadically place this. Because once you start to pull up this paint, it will blend together really well. Making sure I've got it on these edges. Now I'm gonna go back with my green and really offload my brush so it's not very wet and just kind of feather over this a bit so it blends a little bit better. There is totally no science to this. I totally discovered doing this just by happenstance, just trying new things, trying to figure out how to make these colors work best together. So same as before, we're gonna wait until this cracks a little bit and then we'll start to lift it. I'm 
really happy with how this is turning out. I love all of these layers. You can still see some of those hints of gray from that Parisian gray. We still even see some of that white from our light base on our very first layer. I love the way that the green mixed with that red and we still see tons of that pink. I think all of these colors work so well together. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It seems like a lot of layers, and it is, but it really gives you such an incredible texture. On the vanity piece that I did this finish on, I added one extra layer of crack patina and Almond Days One Step Paint. Now I just wanted this on my high ridges on the legs, so I'm gonna show you how to do that strategically placed just along this edge here. So we're gonna apply our cracked patina, same mixture, but I'm gonna use a small brush and really be careful to place it just where I'm gonna want that extra layer of one step paint. If you end up getting that cracked patina over this finish, you're gonna have to go over it with one step paint because it'll just be super sticky. So I'm gonna really carefully put this just where I want that next color of one step. And this is just gonna give me a little extra layer just to give some definition between those high ridges and the rest of my piece. So really carefully putting this down just where I'm gonna put that almond daze. If you're working on a piece that you need to really separate, maybe leave some tape down, be just really careful that you're not getting that cracked patina on any of the surface that you just worked so hard to create. Otherwise, you're going to have to go over it because it's just going to be a sticky mess. So we're going to leave that and we're going to let that dry 30 minutes or so and then I'll come back in with the almond days. So my last layer of that little strip of cracked patina is dry, so I'm gonna go in with the color Almond Days. This is a really pretty neutral, and I just wanted to highlight some of those ridges on that vanity. So I'm gonna show you how we do that on this little strip. So same small artist brush, and just being really careful to only put that one step paint where that cracked patina is. If you end up getting that paint on an area that there is no cracked patina, you're basically just painting over the surface that you just worked for. So again, working quickly the same as before, just putting this down where that cracked patina is. Now I'm gonna wait for that to dry, and as we see it cracking, we're gonna pull that up with our hands, just the same as we did with our other layers. And really be careful when you're doing these strategic layers that you don't get your product on your hand and then put it down onto a surface that you don't want it to go onto. I think it's a really great tool to be able to use cracked patina and just a little bit more of a strategic way, if you're working on a larger piece and you want to have some cracked de details and cracked areas just on specific areas but not the entire thing, this would be the way to do it. And I'm just making sure to remove enough so I see that beautiful layer underneath, but still get that hint of that almond color just on that ridge there. So I'm going to call that good for showing you guys how to do a strategic place layer of crack patina. This is a great tool to know how to use just in case you have a piece that you don't want the entire thing to be chippy, but just some certain areas, just giving that last little extra layer of texture and depth. Up on this finish, I'm going to show you how I use bright gold mica powder with a little bit of clear wax 
to make this mica powder into more of a paste that I can use with my finger and run along the edges of this finish. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this clear wax out with just really anything that you can scrape it out with. And I'm gonna kind of work with it a bit just so there's no chunks. And then I'm gonna take my bright gold, bright gold, not bronze, and we're just gonna scoop out a bit of this. And I'm gonna start working it into this wax. Mica powders are so fun to work with. It's definitely one of my most used things in my shop. I use them dry in powder format. I mix them with clear coat to create more of a paint. And I do this where I make more of a hard wax kind of substance so that I can use it more strategically than I'd be able to as a paint. And now I can use this with my finger on an edge of this finish. So taking this and just taking my finger and then running it over these edges. You get a little bit more of a strategic placement doing it this way than you would if you used it as a paint mixed with a clear coat. Because I just want this kind of highlighted on some of those edges and on my hardware. I'm just running it on that edge. And that is gonna be my final touch on this finish. If you have any questions about how I got this finished, leave a comment below. I look forward to seeing you guys next week.